Romans 1, 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. The gospel is tied back to what Jesus did. That is why Paul writes the gospel of his Son. Two things that come to my mind when I think of the word gospel are good news and message. It is not called the gospel of man. It is called the gospel of his Son. Man is not the center of the gospel. Christ is. If man was the center, it would not be good news. But, but what makes the gospel good news? And Jesus had cried with a loud voice. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Luke 23, 46. Usually when you just hear the word death, nothing good really comes to mind. But when you hear the phrase, Jesus is death, many good things come to mind. There was a work that was accomplished in the death of Christ. The Bible often relates to the to Christ's death as a sacrifice. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, Hebrews 10, 12. The word sacrifice means cost or ransom. This is a price that was paid by God, for he sent his only begotten son, and it was also paid by Jesus, for he left his heavenly home and laid down his life. And this was no small price to pay, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cuff from cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Luke 22, 42. But Jesus completed this work faithfully, for it was the will of God. And because this price was paid, we can now come to the Lord, repent, and be forgiven. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, and wound it in linen cloths with spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never a man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the Passover was at hand. John 19, 38 to 42. Some might think, what's so special about a burial? But after reading this text I just read, we see it was no small task. His body was prepared for the burial, and no man had ever been buried in the sepulcher. You could say that death had never been brought to the sepulcher. The king of kings was the first to be laid in the sepulcher. Jesus had accomplished the work he was sent to do, and now his body was to be put to rest. And Christ's body was laid in the sepulcher dead, but he came forth with life. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Luke 24, 5 through 7. Because the Lord is risen, we now have hope. We now eagerly anticipate his return. Not only do we know that he died for our sins, but that he is risen and is coming again to receive those who have believed. And this especially must have given the disciples hope, because they were downcast that Jesus had died. But now knowing that he was risen and coming again must have filled them with great joy. So through each of these things, we can see how the gospel of his son is good news of his son. Through each of these works, so summing up each of these, we see through Christ's death, our eyes were open and tongues loosed. Through his burial, we see that his body was prepared and cleansed for it. And we can see that we now have hope through his resurrection. Through each of these, a work was accomplished. And notice with each of these, when you leave Jesus out, there's really no significance. If it was the gospel of man, nothing would have, made, nothing would have been accomplished as Jesus had done. So we can be thankful that it is the gospel of his son and not the gospel of man. And in each, God made it to where the only to receive glory are God and his son. I give thanks that the Lord has provided this gospel, for without it we'd be at a great disadvantage.